This is Clayton Howe's Entertainment X. For part two with Dustin Cross of Dustin Cross Designs, we continue the conversation on cultivating collaboration, his work-life balance, and what he's looking forward to. So I hope you enjoy part two with Dustin Cross. Yeah, is there a um, is there a recent project that has taught you a significant amount about yourself or standout lesson? Gosh, um, I feel like I take something away from every project. I will say I just um, finished most recently um, a production of Mystic Pizza at the Engaman Theater yes. in Northport, Long Island. Um, yes. No, it was uh, it was a an incredibly challenging production, but challenging in a way that it was a fun goal to finish Hmm. um it's a brand new musical it's only been done once uh in the united states it was it premiered at ogunquit playhouse Hmm. which is a home playhouse for me so it was lovely to do a work that they had brought into the theater um with that said there was so much to the script that would change on the daily um only being the second people to do it it was a brand new viewpoint so um I guess that that really taught me, I was working with a brand new director, hmm. um, really taught me that, that art of collaboration and coming back together, it, it's just important. It's so necessary in this process. Hmm. Um, and in the end, it was a great, great tech process. We really, um, we really combined our efforts. Ashley Marinelli, Tiger Brown, Igor Golden, um, Kyle Dixon, just a really solid team. Jose Santiago on the lighting design, because we had talked so much in this pre-pro process, um, it just, it was a dream. It really was. Mm. It's so special when everyone clicks, you know, you're all speaking the same language, (laughs) you know, and you stand in the room and you're yelling into the universe. Let us all work together again. This works. (laughs) Manifest Uh, baby. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. Uh, which, you know, you sh- you continue to show that work and theaters recognize it. I mean, how many times do you open your computer and go to Playbill just to look at the pictures to see what people are creating? To see, I, I know that I do. I look at a picture and I see the entire team. I see the lighting that's in the picture. Mm-hmm. You see the costumes. You see the movement, even though it's a still photo, Mm. Um, but you see the body line, Mm. you see the direction, you see the shape of it. Um, And, you know, it's my goal to always work with a team that creates those pictures that spark that much interest in each department. Mm. Moving, moving along here, you know, as time, (laughs) time stands still for no one. That's so true. What trends are you are you seeing any new trends in the theater industry, particularly maybe in costuming? Um, sure. Again, post pandemic, does anything come to mind? I think we're taking a more contemporary look at a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, we are definitely in projects that I've been working on as of late. We're taking this uh, this current view of the world, even in period pieces and sort of bringing that into close. I think it's so important, um, to people that we sort of ground here in 2022, the fact that we connect the people of today to the people of them. Um, and we do it through clothing. So I'm, I'm seeing a lot of that, even whether I'm pushing it into my work or it's, it's being sort of, manifested by the director um yeah that that sense of street clothing becoming other time periods or Hmm. the necessity of finding within street clothing um an entire character so rather than building for a character we're now shopping for a character Hmm. which i think is um we talked about this has been sort of my my MO and design is creating these closets from way back when for each character. And it's now come to a point where I'm shopping closets for characters. Um, and it's, it's very cool. It's, it's cool to walk into a modern retail establishment and see um, a skirt that's cut that becomes a penne for you mm-hmm. in this period piece. Um, 
with some imagination. I, I love how we're, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I love how we refer to uh, the 90s now as period, <laughs> period piece. Oh my God. There was a <laughs> spirit Halloween was, had the 90s costume and it was a pullover um, jacket and like large white sunglasses. And I was like, wow, I, that was just an outfit for me. Yeah. That was not a period piece. <laughs> In fact, I still have four or five of them. Um, I no, it's, it is. It's so, yeah, it's funny. And, and the kids of today really, I mean, they love it. I'm like, what? I don't need a carpenter gene to come back though. Thank <laughs> you. Please, please. You heard it here on Entertainment X. Uh, yeah. And you know what? It, I also, along with that 90s thing, because there's films being made into musicals, it's been a long time thing. It's very, you know, it's very trendy, right? And it helps with sure. ticket sales because it's an existing IP and all this good stuff. But we're definitely in the 90s catalog with quite a few. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> musicals coming along. I mean, just talking into the future here, speaking into the future, there's a lot of these nineties adaptations that are. Yeah. We've sort of gone from um, that seventies world. We hit the eighties a little bit, which is our current catalog. Mm. And this nineties got the notebook. Um, or is that early two thousands? I mean, have we surpassed the nineties already? Well, I mean, I'm thinking Mr. Holland's opus is in the works, right? Mystic Absolutely. pizza is in the works. Um, Oh, goodness. Put me on the spot. And I can't name them. A significant amount. No, it's though. totally fine. But it is. Yeah, there are so many movie musicals. Yeah. Um, it's just fun. It's fun to see your childhood become your your adulthood in a whole in a whole new way. And you're you're hoping or helping to create it. Yeah. Yeah. What are you what are you getting excited about? What's coming up? That's really, really getting the gears turning for you. You know, I I'm traveling a lot. Um, <laughs> so you could say that. I, that nervous laugh, that nervous laugh. Um, no, what is, what am I getting excited about? I'm aside from work, I'm getting excited about um, personal things. I'm going to Tuscany in February, mm. which is very exciting. Um, I have a birthday, a significant birthday this year. And the big two, we one. Took, yes, <laughs> the two, one, the big two, one. No, we took time to, um, my family rented a villa and we're going to stay in Tuscany for 10 days. So looking forward to that. Yes. Um, but show wise, I mean, I've, uh, I've cultivated some really special relationships with theaters where I'm doing almost their entire seasons this year. Mm -hmm. um, the Engman being one of them and some great projects uh, on the way from them. Christmas story. We're going into um, Margaritaville, which is a, a favorite show of mine that I got to work on one of the first regional productions Yeah, uh, and going back to revisit that, you know, so I think everything in this, this sounds cliche, but everything seems special to me in this post pandemic world or this current pandemic world. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm mm. excited about honestly just being back to collaboration mm. Um and back to what we get to call work. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, projects on the rise. You know, it's check it, the website for details. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin Cross Designs, baby. Um, <laughs> it's it's interesting how you know what we we what we focus on we find, and it could be that I'm focusing on it lately. But I'm seeing a lot of people around me really start to hit a groove with whatever they're working on. And we met 2017. And you had a, there was a groove then, but what, what just resonated with me that you had mentioned is these re working relationships you now have with multiple different companies are really, it's really, I mean, you are really in a groove with everything that keeps, you know, coming down the pike. Yeah, it, it, it really does. When it locks, it locks. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to hark on this, but we talk about that cultivating relationships cultivating positivity mm -hmm. that's what people want around them and it just it really does pay off when you are able to to sort of spread your message i mean especially through what you what i think i do best which is costumes clothing do, do you feel that way do you feel like it's been a a, a different groove for you post pandemic or was it pre pandemic or did you feel it coming in and then getting cut short with the pandemic I'm just curious because the way you no, view no, someone was, from the outside is so different than what they're. 
Yeah, no, I was, I, I will say this, um, pre pandemic, I was, yes, I was working constantly and I love that. I was taking so many different random gigs, um, that it, it started to take a toll on me because it was, I mean, to borrow a quote from Lady Gaga, it was plain, plain theater, another theater, plain. No, it just, that's how it felt. It was every single day I was like, I would wake up in a hotel and I'd be like, tell me what state I'm in right now. Um, and Oy. <laughs> exactly. Grateful for it. Grateful for it. Sure, sure. Um, but you know, this, this new world that we're in and I feel theaters also levitating and grabbing towards this is this sense of this is our family. This is our creative team. And, you know, taking five or six people and being like, okay, if you do this show, then you take a show off. Somebody else comes in for this next show. Mm -hmm. um, and they just want to keep people closer to them. So it's not this sense of, of travel and not knowing people. Mm. I feel as a whole theater has really connected to this mindset um, of cultivating family mm. of, you know, keeping people close. We, we lost so many people um, that it did it just, it's necessary to, to make sure that you, you work and you play with who you want to be with. I love I love this I love this part too with us because it it's it got much less of a structure and we can really just dive a little bit deeper on other aspects instead of having such an agenda. So I appreciate you jumping around in this conversation. No, I, you know, I I was thinking that same thing as we started this. It feels like such a level of trust this time. Not that it wasn't the last time, but it was I, I honestly, I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday, sitting at that table with those headphones on, and it was, and the it was like, okay, remember. let's do this. Exactly. Uh, you know, and here we are. We were friends then, but even better friends now, and just just able to talk about what what works for us in this business, what doesn't work, and what we hope to change in the world. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Before we wrap up, though, I do have to ask my final favorite. Metaphorically speaking... Um, if you could put a word or a phrase on a billboard for millions of people to see, does anything come to mind? Yes. I mean, before we talked about uh, preaching positivity, mm -hmm. I will say my, um, my current phrase, and I hope it was reflected in this, in this episode is continuing collaboration. Um, and really just looking towards the future with the current people that you have around you making sure that those teams work celebrating that those teams work and then flourishing and thriving and all of those words that make us feel warm inside mm. um it's just so important in this current climate that we the only thing we can do is celebrate each other celebrate new thoughts and new ideas, celebrate different thoughts and different ideas, challenge yourself because of those thoughts and collaborate. I love it. Love you. Great conversation. Love you. Anything else? Yes, of course. Always. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? I'm looking forward to part three, which will be coming out in 2024. <laughs> um, by then I will have, you know, 27 more. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be I'll 22. Have a new catchphrase that, <laughs> yes. Um, no, thank you so much for always including me in this. I'm so proud to be a part of, of the Entertainment X catalog family. Um, you have amazing people on this show, and the messages that you're able to share with this community are so important. So thank you. Well, thank you, Dustin. People of the world, Dustin Cross. <laughs> You've been listening to Entertainment X, the podcast. You can follow Entertainment X on Instagram at underscore Entertainment X underscore. If you haven't yet, go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. Join Clay next week for another curiosity conversation on Entertainment X. Thank you for listening.